What's going on there, folks? Good evening once again. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Thursday night, December 7th, 2023. It's about 11.21 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity, some movement uh, kicking off down there into the South Sandwich Trench here, subduction zone area. Uh, 5.2 being reported by the EMSC model on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Uh, well, USGS reporting this as a 5.2 here. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of activity stirring up down there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the model out here. Still seeing some movement once again out in the Philippines, as expected. This aftershock activity could continue for weeks, if not months, down the road here. So, uh, hopefully it will mellow out in terms of the magnitudes out there. 4.9, the latest earthquake, though, in the last hour. Uh, getting some movement up here. To the uh, north of the uh, seven-pointer that struck out here this morning, of course, that 7.1, pretty strong earthquake out there. Uh, we are seeing uh, a little bit of migration of pressure up here north into the Solomon Islands um, and starting to get that little uh, bounce back and forth here of some uh, movement out around the Tonga Trench, although this activity stirring up out here is not deep this is all relatively shallow earthquake activity so it's possible uh, we could be looking at maybe something bigger brewing up here upstream here uh, into the tonga trench region so keep an eye on that area uh, one earthquake down here to the uh, kermadec trench that's a 5.2 let's see if we got anything going on here in new zealand doesn't look like it aside from a couple threes there but uh, let's go ahead and give a quick glance here at the geonet servers just to see if anything's going on out there in New Zealand currently. Uh, 3.5 being reported 13 hours ago. Doesn't look like any major shaking being reported out here. Uh, there's some of that uh, three-pointer. It looks like some other smaller magnitudes out here as well. I'm sure one of these uh, is going to be that seven-pointer. The signature from that seven-pointer. I believe that's going to be that one right here. Uh, it showed up pretty nicely on all the stations. Aside from that, local seismic activity there limited uh, to the small range. There's that 7-pointer once again showing up on the New Zealand stations. Again, that's from that 7.1 up north here into the uh, Vanuatu area. That earthquake coming in again about 48 kilometers deep. Uh, some movement up here into, uh, it looks like around the Yellow Sea. This earthquake coming in this morning though, uh, 5.1, relatively shallow. The Kuro Kamachaka Trench, awfully quiet out here. Uh, once again, Japan Trench, quiet as well. Nothing really showing up here on the Earthquake 3D globe for this area. Uh, the region of Alaska, uh, fairly minimal. A little 2.7 right there on the Aleutian Trench area. 2.1 coming into Hawaii, so that's let's go over there, see what's going on here. Getting a pretty good amount of earthquake activity once again kicking up here south of the summit region into the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park here, just south of Kilauea Crater area. Uh, these earthquakes coming in relatively small, but still we're starting to see the uh, multi uh, multitude of these quakes kick up a little bit. And uh, about 1.8 kilometers or so uh, for the depth of these earthquakes. Uh, let me see what we got for the um, inflation chart up here. I kind of want to see if we're really spiking up here or not or if we're inflating over there around Kilauea Volcano or maybe we're not. Let's see what's going on here from the UWE station. Uh, a little bit of up and down here over the last couple days. That was a pretty minimal, a fairly minimal deflation event. Um, kind of watching this one. I know this one right here started off slow, right? Remember it never really peaked up above the previous level of inflation until a little couple days later so it's possible we could see that similar scenario uh, but we just don't know 100 percent but it seems to be following a trend of gradual inflation and if my calculations are correct here we should be heading off in that direction right here well above the previous highest level if we can make it that long as uh, far as the um the earthquake activity goes it's quite amplified out here today Last 12 hours shows uh, quite a bit of earthquake movement stirring up out here. Uh, definitely a lot more than the uh, number of earthquakes shown here. They, they got about 28 earthquakes. I uh, could probably double that, I'm guessing. I'm not going to sit here and count 
all these little spikes out here, but it definitely looks like there's a handful uh, more than what's being mentioned. Either way, definitely elevated out here. And uh, kind of watching this region right here, this is a little separate swarm area. Pretty deep though, about 30 kilometers or so below the surface. I mean, it's uh, around the Pahala area. This region is known for uh, some deep movement and a lot of it. Uh, it's been an ongoing swarm since, uh, well, I think since about the 60s or so. No joke. Not even joking. Go look it up. Uh, the Hawaii, uh, the USGS has an interesting article on this. Um, but yeah, this, I don't know. It seems kind of out of place here. I thought it was more uh, around this area, but you never know. Either way, getting uh, some activity stirred up there into the Big Island for sure. Definitely watch that. Uh, into the Pacific Northwest, a handful of earthquakes across the Cascades. Nothing big going on here. Uh, we haven't checked the Tremor map in a couple days, so let's see what's going on here for the Cascadia Tremor. Uh, see if we got anything. 30 epicenters, a little bit there in Northern California and uh, some there in Oregon. But uh, overall, the trend of declining Tremor continues. It's been awfully quiet here compared to the years past. Our last major tremor event was back in, well, back in roughly October of uh, last year. Let me go back here and see here. All data. In October of last year, roughly right about there, we had uh, the last tremor event. Aside from that, um, we've seen a couple little events of tremor, but that's about it. So just uh, not for sure exactly what that means. Basically, uh, I think just everything's compacted out here. We're not really seeing any of that slow slippage going on here uh, between the two plates. Further into Northern California, a handful of earthquakes there across the San Francisco Bay. Uh, 1.5 looks to be the number there across the board for the most part. Southern California, well, it's it looks quiet for now, but I am going to leave up the earthquake watch for uh, the remainder of the night just because... Uh, I like to give it a little bit more time. It's been elevated out here across the Pacific, as you guys know. And that includes areas around California as well. Seen some threes and twos. Um, but uh, here in the last couple hours, things have kind of calmed down. The latest earthquake of 1.1 near Fontana, uh, just on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. No major unusual swarming going on for now, but we'll continue to watch this area. Uh, across the region of the Southern Plains here, Got one earthquake in Kansas, near Bennington, Kansas, 2.6. And a couple other earthquakes out through the Texas region. Aside from that, uh, the rest of the country here looks pretty quiet. Got one lonesome up, one lonesome earthquake up here around the Quebec area of Canada. Uh, that earthquake coming in about 23 kilometers deep for a 1.9. Nothing big. There's that little earthquake here. Well, I shouldn't say little. Kind of a big earthquake there into the... Mexico area, 44.4 kilometers below the surface for that 5.8 occurring earlier this afternoon. Uh, let's see here. The Gulf of Aden over here still showing some movement. It looks like we did see another 4.7. Um, so, yeah, things, things just kind of neutral right now. Nothing unusual going on. Of course, heightened areas out here. Um... It's hard to say exactly where I think this is going to continue to advance. What do we got here? 5.9? Or is that from this morning? I believe that was from... Uh, no, that's right now. Goodness. Let's see here. So EMSC looks like they're reporting that 5.9 here into the Vanuatu area, it looks like. See that 5.9? Uh, pretty recent earthquake there. Just showing up on the Earthquake 3D globe right now. USGS not picking up on it yet. Um, but definitely some earthquake activity stirring up back here into the uh, Vanuatu region. Let's see what we got. Of course, this is just preliminary data. I believe it's just coming in. Uh, there's that 5.9 10 minutes ago they're stating. The source parameters, of course, have not been reviewed by a seismologist. This is all just going off of information provided here by these folks in uh, Germany, Malaysia, and France. So uh, this could be obviously subject to change after a review of uh, from a seismologist. 
Either way, Deflin kind of stirred up out here, folks. Continuing to keep the activity on the uptick uh, side out here. We'll check back on that here in a second. Uh, let's see. South America, pretty quiet. A couple twos out there for now. All right, uh, let's go ahead and check space weather while we're kind of waiting on that data. Let's see what's going on here from the solarham.net site. Still seeing some flaring going on currently as we speak. You can see the global D-layer absorption map showing a little bit of sea flare activity, it looks like, here from 3513, I believe. That's the culprit number out here. This uh, bad boy is just sparking a bunch of sea flares and M flares out here over the last couple days. 3513. Is this region up here? That's an older image. So the newer, most recent image right here uh, still looks like it's somewhat complex within the central core of that sunspot. We'll continue to keep this region in check, or at least in mind, uh, for some potential flaring. Right now, 99% chance for a C flare. Obviously, we're getting that right now. 40% chance for an M flare and X flare around 5% chance. Um, yeah, so there's a couple M flares here over the last 48 hours from 3513. No major expected coronal or uh, CMEs. Uh, so the the uh, three day looks pretty quiet for now. Not really expecting anything major going on. There's that little prominence eruption there earlier today. Shouldn't say little. That thing was awfully huge in terms of the Earth's sun size and the uh, whatnot. But uh, goodness, pretty crazy. Let's see, it looks like you made a little movie out here. Look at that. That is a beautiful feature, shooting out a lot of charged plasma or plasma off of the uh, uh, sun area, the surface area of the sun. And uh, that's that's pretty crazy. Not Earth-directed. Had that been Earth-directed, well, we could probably, if it was squarely lined up and one of those were definitely looking at Earth, we'd probably see some pretty good storms here on on this planet as far as uh, the auroras go but uh, we missed it let's see here yeah any uh, associated cme will be directed away from our planet all right uh what else we got here storm prediction center not a whole lot going on for severe weather right now but here on saturday looks like that severe weather threat will continue into uh, portions of the south with a huge area, 5% chance for tornado probability. Uh, and that includes some wind and large hell as well out there across portions of Tennessee, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, extreme eastern Texas out here as well. So uh, just a heads up, uh, the weekend when everyone's at home, got to be prepared. Make sure you got your uh, weather radio on hand this weekend, no matter what you're doing out there. As far as the... Uh, rest of these models go well the storm system in in question here that's going to bring that severe potential you can see it uh, coming here saturday into sunday there it is lots of cold dry air coming behind that interacting with some warmer moist air i uh, got high pressure out here in the center portion of the country somewhat uh that's going to keep the storms at bay for the west coast it looks like i'm, I'm not a big fan of that high pressure park there but it does look uh, like maybe towards the 16th or so, 17th of December. We got some more storms knocking on the west coast door down south as well. Look at that, man. Look at this typical pattern here of El Nino. Lots of expected above precipitation in this area. And boy, are they going to get it. Uh, so lots of rain coming into the uh, southern portion of the area. And hopefully California gets their share as well. Uh, it's supposed to. California is supposed to be uh, looking at some, you know, decent rainfall. Uh, a real quick glance here. This was for the month of um, November. Here's December. Here's these areas. This is a basically an anomaly forecast in terms of precipitation here from the Physical Sciences Laboratory. Uh, Boa. Um, Definitely rings true here for December, it looks like. A, a good portion of the south, Mexico as well, Florida getting in on a lot of rainfall. The heavy-duty rain out here across the west coast looks like it wants to hold off until roughly about January. Then things could be increasing out here across California specifically. 
drier up into the Pacific Northwest. Come February, that intensifies as well. Uh, same for the uh, portions of the south here. And as we head into March, uh, still seeing some above normal precipitation forecasts here uh, for the uh, California area. I'm hoping that holds true. The majority of these models out here are forecasting uh, what looks like, uh, you know, rainier conditions here for California. I think there's one model here that showed drier. Look at that. That's extreme out here for this model. Most of these weather models are showing above precipitation with maybe one that kind of backed off. I don't even know where that one's at. Right there. Uh, that kind of shows mo most of the moisture staying well off the coast and drier out here. But you got one weather model compared to all these other ones showing what looks like uh, more significant uh, precipitation out there for the west coast so january february and march we should get our uh, our rainfall caught up here uh, usgs reporting this as a 5.6 aftershock following that 7.1 uh, into the uh, vanuatu area south of port villa all right so uh, we'll just continue to keep an eye on things out here folks just stay safe have an earthquake plan and guess what tomorrow's friday i didn't barbecue tonight i, I told my members here i was going to upload my barbecue video well just as i was about ready to light up the barbecue missy mimi's comes home and says guess what we're making for dinner so she made some awesome yummy tacos so i put the barbecue on hold until tomorrow um which is fine missy mimi's make some excellent tacos i'm not even joking they came out really good so uh but yeah tomorrow barbecue will definitely jump on that uh, seismograph stations there, uh, a little bit of activity it looks like there in Thailand, but I believe that's from, uh, I don't know, it looks, it doesn't look like it's local here, but uh, definitely maybe some earthquake activity showing up around that region. Uh, Yellowstone, a little spike of an earthquake there in Yellowstone, haven't checked Yellowstone yet, so let's go see. Just to verify, just to verify and make sure that we're not missing any super huge earthquake swarm up here. Uh, pretty quiet. A couple very small hand, handful of earthquakes, but those are super duper small, that's for sure. Um, anything else going on here, folks? Anything abnormal going on in the world? Well, don't want to get, don't want to keep that question open, right? That's a pretty broad uh, area that we could cover, so we'll just stick to what we see out here. And for now, it's pretty active, but uh, we'll continue to watch it and see how things play out for the uh, nighttime. Seems like these big earthquakes out here want to hit when it, when I'm sleeping out here, uh, and when it's light out here, could it have something to do with the uh, uh, the sun facing that area? Who knows? Pretty crazy. But uh, it seems like the majority of these large earthquakes always hit when it's light out here. Remember that nine pointer back in 2011? It's yeah, yeah, it was light over here and it was dark over here. So. Uh, yeah, just maybe there's a trend. I don't know. Anyway, folks, I'm going to call it a night uh, about 40 degrees out. Not too bad. Um, might have a little bit of fog tonight. That's kind of cool. I always love waking up to some fog. Makes, makes for some uh, awesome pictures. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow. Don't forget the member drawing is coming up here in about seven or eight days on the 15th of December. Uh, we'll pull a uh, winner out of the a fishbowl, a random winner in terms of our members here that are on the channel. And of course, they are entered into a drawing every single month for a $50 Visa or MasterCard or a geology mining kit. Or even if you want a cool Earthmaster t shirt, that's always an option as well. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow, Friday. Take care, folks.